It is easy to imagine that the American Revolution and the fate of the 13 colonies were in the hands of men whose names were destined to be famous. Franklin, Jefferson, Washington. After all, not long after the war ended, streets, schools, parks, and cities were named after all these men. A list of names also helped start the war. Many of these famous men signed the Declaration of Independence, telling King George that the colonies should be free. But Americans would not have won the independence without the courage of thousands of people whose names never became famous. My name is James Armistead. I was born into slavery in Virginia in the year 1748. Growing up as a slave was immensely difficult. But then again, I never knew what it was like to be free. I can only imagine what it would be like to make my own decisions and do as I pleased. But this was the life that I was handed. Although not fair, I worked hard. I was enslaved to a tobacco farmer named William Armistead. I learned about the revolution through all of the talks of the slaves and owners. I also heard that the enslaved man could be granted freedom for fighting for the colonies. In 1781, this was exactly what I wanted to do. My owner allowed me to join Lafayette, a French general looking for a special person to fulfill very secret duties. I was chosen to spy on the most infamous name in American history, Benedict Arnold. Benedict Arnold began the Revolutionary War on the side of the colonists. He fought bravely in many battles, but he did not feel appreciated. After being passed for a promotion in 1779, he secretly switched sides. By the next year, he was spying for the British, working against his own commander, General George Washington. Arnold's efforts to aid the British failed, and he was revealed as a spy. He fled in 1780, but soon after Arnold was fighting again, this time alongside Cornwallis, a British general, in battles against the American army, this is where him and I cross paths in orders from Lafayette. I dressed in tattered clothes and pretended to be a one race slave, offering to guide British soldiers down unfamiliar roads. I helped the soldiers, tried to gain their trust, but no one paid much attention to me. This was a big mistake. Cornwallis, Arnold, and their troops said things in front of me that they definitely shouldn't have. I saw secret plans and maps. I would sneak away and pass the information along to Lafayette. The British generals began to have such faith in me that they asked me to spy on the Americans for them, and I agreed. I would give Lafayette real information and give the British false and misleading information about the Americans' plans. Working as a double agent was incredibly risky. I knew that if I was discovered as a spy, they would do what they do to all spies. I would be hanged. But I was never caught. Within the year, the information that I passed to Lafayette allowed the colonial army to trap Cornwallis at Yorktown. The British had no idea, but to, no choice but to surrender. I felt so proud to be able to play such an important role in America achieving independence. The war officially ended in 1783 with an American victory. But there was no victory for me. I received credit for my spying during the war, but I did not earn the freedom I expected. African American soldiers that fought were allowed to be free, not spies. Three years after fighting had ended, I was still enslaved. When Lafayette learned of my circumstances, he was outraged. He gave me a written certificate declaring I should be free. Two long years later, the Virginia legislator made me a free man. As a tribute for what Lafayette did for me, I took his last name. I, James Lafayette, was finally free. There were many people that had a hand in the revolution that may never be known. But without us, the war might have ended very differently.